Hello, in this video we will show how to load the data from Excel and manipulate the data. So here we have the data with the properties from the Excel. So we'll have like a values with the time and RPM columns. So here we see this Excel. So you can see here time, RPM, right? Two type of the data properties, right? Multiple lines, hundred thousands, yeah. And uh, we can embed the Excel inside, or we can uh, leave it, you know, at the same location as the project. Uh, so first step is to create this block, you know, uh, or class uh, with the properties. Then the second step is actually to create instance table with specific stereotype, diagram table map to data source. As you can see here, this is the specific stereotype. And then uh, in that uh, table, add this data uh, RPM values here as a classifier, show those properties, and uh, basically this will uh, load this uh, data. As you can see here, the name of the of the RPM values uh, corresponds the file name, and this will load the uh, data from this uh, Excel. Now. Uh, uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty much uh, what is needed. And then the second, uh, next step is actually now we are creating, uh, for example, the sender uh, with some uh, properties uh, which will be manipulated after the data is loaded. And here we have also the CSV as a type of the uh, object of this type, you know, which we will have as a multiplicity, multi many, as you can see here, right? and refer to this uh, object as CSV, right? And then here in the sender, we will load the data. So we load the data during simulation, right? So here we have this activity, which first step is loading the data and calculating the size of the array, right? So first step, we load whole data at single step. And that's very good, you know, then we'll not read uh, all this, this Excel, you know, we'll just load immediately. And uh, we are following this, uh, uh, Excel API helper. You see here this uh, Excel API helper, uh, which uh, loads the data, reads the data, and so on. Going back, and now here we are uh, getting, uh, increasing the count, uh, assigning the item as a count, you see, like number, and then getting uh, specific values. Uh, get value, get value, you see, from this. Uh, uh, item object, right? So uh, RPM, time, and then for example, we are passing this RPM and sending message with the delay of the time. So we are kind of, you know, sending signal with the mess uh, with the RPM value embedded. Uh, the signal has the RPM property, you see, uh, each uh, time uh, interval. So the time interval comes from Excel, RPM comes for Excel and the signal sent sequence uh, uh, duration between signals is based on this time interval and then we loop until this count is finished. Now, um, when we run this execution, here we can run, we can pause actually before running this one, create the sequence diagram, go here and maybe assemble this here, sequence diagram into this. Expand this one, and this might not be needed. We'll collapse this one here, and then run. As you can see here, it actually delays and sends message by message, you know, delays by this interval from the Excel and said with that RPM from Excel. So very interesting sample. And uh, that's how it shows, uh, that it shows, you know, how to manipulate the data. So actually the big part here is that, as you can see here, once we initiate this sample after first step, done, the step is done, we get all data loaded. So it's here, you see, like this is the whole data, all 300 lines, and then after each, line has its uh, properties rpm and time and then each step is actually just reading next and next objects uh, so in the next uh, uh, section we will uh, demonstrate uh, next uh, part we will demonstrate how to receive the signals and perform uh, 
with the variable number of resources uh, manipulate the signals based on RPM. So let's say that ACU1 and ACU2 will perform some operations based on the different uh, RPMs received from this uh, map. Thank you.